Hey, Makers Church, welcome to Thursday Thoughts. It's been a while since I've been on here. My family and I have been on vacation for a couple weeks, and we had an absolutely amazing time away in the mountains. And uh, while we had such a great time there, it's so good to be back. And I've missed all of you dearly, um, even just interacting this way digitally. But um, even more than that, um, I just miss you guys so much. Um, and, and I can't wait uh, till I can see you all again. And I hope and pray that you're doing well, um, that you are adjusting and being flexible in this season. And I just want to take a few moments today to, to share some thoughts that, that myself and the pastoral team have been um, really listening and, and feeling like we're hearing from God on and, and kind of a new direction that we're going to move into um, for, for the next season. And so before we get to that, I just wanted to share a little bit about the, the parable of the new wine and the old wineskins. Uh, there's a parable that is told in all three of the synoptic gospels, the uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And, and it's a story of Jesus um, telling a parable uh, about new wine being put into old wineskin and how dangerous that is because the wineskin can burst and, and both the old wineskin and the new wine would be spoiled. They would be lost. And you know, COVID has been a, a really, uh, really troubling, really uh, just stressful and and trying time for everybody for all sorts of different reasons. But uh, it's been true for us as a church too. It's been very, very challenging and difficult. Uh, the amount of time and energy that we have put into uh, making plans, making um, decisions, and then having them be undone uh, before we even we're able to communicate them. And, and even though that's all been challenging and stressful, um, we really do sense that God is doing something new and that God can, and we, we believe wholeheartedly that God can use this situation to his glory. And, and we really believe that God is, is repositioning us um, to be more effective as the church. And I think COVID has, we've said this before, it's it's, it's expedited the inevitable. And I, I think that, that the church, that we as Makers Church, that the Big C Church um, has been um, due, due for some really significant and pivotal changes in our methodology and in our model, um, all the while keeping the mission the mission. And for us, we, we want to keep the mission at the center of what we're doing as a church. And if you're new with us, our mission is to really practice the way of Jesus together by living out the great commandment and the great commission. The great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And we, we want to do everything we can to do that well. And we want to have models and systems and structures that, that help us do that. And and if we're being really honest with ourselves, I don't really believe that, that we had a model that was working effectively. And I think that right now we have the time to, to work out and to reimagine and to rethink uh, the way that we can be more effective as the bride of Christ, as the church. And so we're really excited to get to work on that. The second part of our, of our mission is not just the great commandment, but it's the great commission. It's the instructions that Jesus gave us as the church to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to obey the things I've commanded you. And there's a lot there in the Great Commandment and in the Great Commission, and, and we believe that, that, that those two things are worthy of giving our lives to as we collectively, corporately, and in, in community practice the way of Jesus as we try to live those two things out. And I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that, that we can find a new wineskin, a new structure, a new, a new vessel, a new vehicle, a new model, a new method that's going to help us live our mission more effectively. I've been saying this a lot to our team and and even in my own mind and heart, that, that I don't know a whole lot about the future, but I do know that the future is flexible, that, that we need to be flexible, that we need to be 
malleable and that we can't be so rigid and and stuck in our old ways and and that's what the metaphor that's what the the parable of the old wineskin is all about the the old wineskin was was made of 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 skin from uh, some sort of animal and and over time it would get rigid and it would get brittle and if you put new wine into that old wineskin the fermentation process as the gases began to to move and grow and 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 and, and expand inside of this old wineskin, it would cause that old structure, the old system, to crack and to leak. And if, if it's true that God's doing something new, and we believe that he is, then we believe that, that, that we need a new vehicle, a new vessel, a new wineskin um, to, to, to really be designed so that we can live out the mission more effectively. And so this is what we've decided to do as a team, that we're going to spend the next several months, what we call working on our ministry instead of in our ministry. Now, now we're still going to be ministering. We're still going to be working uh, diligently to provide church online, to provide other opportunities, connect, and community groups, and, and all of that. But we're going, to, we're going to throttle back on some of the pressure to sort out the future. And we're going to take some time to collectively pray through and, and, and ideate and, and think through what would it look like for us to reimagine what a new future can look like for us as a church when it comes to model, to methodology, um, to the system? And we want to reimagine that. And after we reimagine that, we want to spend some time re-engineering, re-putting back together a system that will help us and help you more effectively live the mission of Jesus and we want you to partner with us in that. And we're going to be transparent. We're going to be um, very vocal and communicative with what we sense God is leading us towards. And we want your feedback along the way. And so uh, we want you to stay tuned and to participate with us as we sort this out together, as we, as we strive to hear from God in this. And so our ask is that, that you would be praying with us, that you'd be praying for us as we come to the table. And, and we begin to reimagine and then re-engineer what church could and, and will look like for us in the future. I'm really, really hopeful. I really believe that, that God is doing something new. I can sense it in the depth of my being. And I know that he has brought us together as a church for such a time as this. And, and we have an incredible opportunity to innovate, to, to reimagine, to rethink um, how God can mobilize us more effectively as the church. And so that's our hope. Our hope is that that as we spend some time working on this, that on the other side, that, that we would have a more effective church that is integrating all of the things that we have sensed God leading us towards. The, the, the conversations around racial reconciliation, that it wouldn't just be a conversation, but it would become embedded in the DNA of this new model that we're imagining, that, that, that we would be a multi-generational church more effectively, that we would be able to learn from each other, uh, the wisdom can be passed down from generation to generation, that we would care deeply about families and kids, and that we would find a way to be effective in, in helping parents see their family as their primary ministry. And, and, and being able to equip and inspire and, and send people into their vocations, into their workplaces, their oikos, their spheres of influence, um, to share the gospel, to live the gospel. And this is what we're hoping to do, to, to find a new way to do this more effectively in this new world that we're living in. And so we're so hopeful, we're so grateful for your patience and for your commitment uh, to being part of Maker's Church. And we just want to invite you into this process with us, and it's going to start with prayer. So we're just so thankful for you. We love you. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot more to come. We love you. God bless.